The fact of the matter is, whether you've been in network marketing for years or just a few days, your family and friends have seen your opportunity and your phone is, as we call it, burnt. If you're anything like me, that's a scary thought. So the big question is, how do entrepreneurs like us, who love the network marketing profession, who no longer want to be that guy and are tired of convincing people during uncomfortable let's get coffee meetings where they say, what's this all about? How do we market in a way that aligns us with our dream clients and expands our network of upfront and transparent professionals, allowing us to get our time back, our families back, and gain a real passive asset? People like us who value impact over income, we deserve to see our visions once and for all. Join me in this podcast where we'll uncover just how to do that. My name is Eric Sablon. Welcome to Burnt Phone Marketing. What is going on, guys? Eric Sablon here with Burnt Phone Marketing, and I have a treat for you guys today. There's so many people in that marketing space that have done some things but haven't been on the stages, haven't been on the places, haven't been on the TV shows. So one of the really, really cool things that we have today, this treat is she's been on a couple of TV shows. She's done on a a couple of things. She's been on radio. She's done all sorts of stuff. So her first job was in the industry on the show, The Walking Dead. So if you haven't heard of The Walking Dead, you probably need to get up from underneath the rock that you were underneath because that show was amazing. So she's worked on TV shows from Fox, CBS, NBC, MTV, VH1, OWN, Discovery Channel. Her first, she's worked with the the Food Network. She's been on three featured films with big name stars and prayed with Oprah. Hello guys, she has prayed with Oprah. She started three companies, flipped seven houses in two years, all at a profit. So the whole like, we've set up houses, but we never made any money, we just were, uh, like I like, like I like to tell people, we were we were eating soup with a fork. She wasn't doing that. She was actually making a profit. She spoke from stages. She spoke from the ResCon stage 2020, one of the largest home convention state uh, home stagers conventions. She's been on radio shows like This Dream House twice and featured in multiple magazines. Please welcome Miss. Shay Kent to the show. Shay, welcome to the show. Hi. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here with you, Eric. I'm fired up. When you, when you took the interview, I was like, awesome, sweet. This is so cool. And it's really cool. I got to give a shout out to one of my really good friends. She connected us and she was like, maybe you guys can do something together. And I'm like, I got to get this girl on my podcast. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Super excited. One thing that you did say is in 72 hours, you did something crazy and in, can you like run through what you did yeah when you when you when you wrote that I was like that is like the super like icebreaker what I've done in 72 hours so take a listen to this guy's amazing 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 little story about what she did in 72 hours yeah so in 72 hours I was like you know what I've never given blood before I'm gonna go ahead and do something for others for community for humanity so I went and I donated my blood And then I went and had lunch with my mom. And uh, while we're sitting there, I was like, you know, I feel like going and getting a tattoo. I've never had a tattoo before. And so then I just Googled one and went off and got a tattoo. And then to kick things off uh, even further, as if that wasn't enough, I went and jumped out of a perfectly good airplane on a whim all within 72 hours. It was insane. My pe- my friends were like, oh, are you going through a midlife crisis? You're a little early for that. I was like, no, I'm just living life, man. That is amazing. Like action, do- doing it. And then you also said that you swam with sharks in Bora Bora and one of the first 40 people to jump. Apparently you like to jump out of things. So she jumped off the boat into this <laughs> water. <laughs> so- I did. I did. Everybody's looking over the sides of these boats and we're watching all of these sharks swim around. And I'm like, well, this is what we came here for. And I dove right in. And as soon as I did and like opened my eyes, I was like, oh my gosh, there's way more sharks in the water than I thought. (laughs) It was a little scary, but it was also the most amazing time. Wow. That's like taking action to the finest. So, and, and one of the things that you do is you actually teach people how to take action and why it's important to take action. What I kind of want to ask is, you know, how did your entrepreneur career started? I mean, you were in the TV industry and you've actually made it slight transition into some coaching and you and your husband do a really, really cool like coaching program. But 
tell us, you know, what the transition was from where you were to this whole coaching, um, this coaching realm that you've gone into. Yeah, life is so interesting and in how it unfolds, right? Like when you're living it and the dots are not really connecting, it's when you turn around and you look back and you're like, oh yeah, I can see how all of these dots actually connect to one another and create this life that we're doing. So I, back in the day, I took forever to get through college. Um, I kept changing my mind on what I wanted to do. I had no direction. I was working in a restaurant and I knew my passion was film. But I also thought, you know, I'm not gonna be able to make any money and a career at this. And so it really took me a long time to finally go, okay, I don't want to wait tables forever. Although that could be a good plan for somebody that's, that's not my plan. So when they asked me to start training to be management, I thought, if I take this, this is as good as it's ever going to get. And I didn't want that. So I quit my job the next day. I enrolled in film school and I worked on graduating in three years. Uh, you know, really high GPA. I was on a Dean's list and that's how I got into the walking dead. So from there, I started working in set decoration, which was helping them go shopping and picking out everything that goes on set and making it look the way it's supposed to look, creating the worlds, if you will. Um, and within this time frame of a few years, I had gotten engaged, got married. He was living in Colorado and I was living in Atlanta. So we had only spent like five months together of our first year of marriage, which was kind of nutty. And I thought, you know, this is not why I got married. You know, I actually want to be around this person. So um, I pivoted again and moved back to Colorado. And that's when we started flipping houses, which just sort of transitioned into home staging because that was practically what I was doing on set anyway. So it just made sense. So with that, <laughs> I was helping other home stagers figure out their marketing plan. Um, and when I was teaching them marketing stuff, I was discovering that what they really needed, not what they wanted, but what they needed was mindset work. So I started doing mindset stuff. And when I started adding that, that into my trainings, I just watched people skyrocket their successes. And so then I thought, you know what? If I'm only limiting this to home stagers, I'm really doing a disservice. I need to open this up to more people. And so that's sort of how we came around to opening up Taking Inspired Action, which is developed specifically for service-based entrepreneurs and business owners to help them get out of their own way so they can skyrocket their business, expand their business, create an impact in the world, all while creating their ideal lifestyle, which is exactly what we do. Well, I'm going to just kind of throw a little bit of uh, collaboration around that. So I, I like what you said. You basically went from here to here. You got out of the glass ceiling. And we talked about jumping. She likes to jump. Like, let's just <laughs> go full circle. She literally jumped from a job waiting tables and going to management to the next step. And then she did the next step and the next step, a bunch of jumps. So just so you guys know that success is just on the other side of that fear that you're taking to jump. So take that jump. I mean, she's done it. She, Shay has like done the, the transitions and she's, she's really worked on, on herself. Um, and I, I like what she said. She was connecting the dots and you don't really connect the dots when you don't look at it from that three thirty thousand 30,000 foot view. It's like all of my choices that I'm making actually make these dots make sense. Mm -hmm. And the realization is like, I made that choice. That's what it was. That's why that happened. So I, I love that part of your story. Um, but that's amazing. So tell me a little bit about the transition from Chicago, I mean, from Atlanta to Colorado when you started flipping houses, because, you know, a lot of people out there, I want to flip houses, I want to flip houses. And I, I like what you did, you niched into staging houses. So what made you go from like, I'm just going to flip houses to staging houses? Honestly, the most fun part about the entire flipping process was getting to bring in the furniture and de decorate at the end. And so I built up an inventory of um, around three houses worth of furniture. And it, if I didn't have a flip that was ready to be sold, it was just sitting in a warehouse. And so I thought, well, why am I letting this 
potential money go to waste when I could be putting this in other homes that are ready to go out and actually make money on the inventory that I purchased for myself. So that's literally how I got started. I was solving a problem for myself of going, I've spent all this money on this furniture and now it's just sitting here not doing anything for me. So how can I leverage that to start making money? Wow. Like super ingenuitive, super, like I love what you're doing. It's like everything that you're doing, you're always finding a way to, and I don't want to say it the, the wrong way, you're always finding a way to monetize what you're doing already. It's like some sort of existing inventory, some sort of existing thing that you're doing. You're you're looking at a, a way to monetize to monetize what you're doing. And then um, when you transition from that, a lot of people are like, well, how did you get on these TV shows? And how did you get on these, you know, how did you get on these radio shows? And how did you speak at this big giant event? Like what, what was like, how did you network to get to that spot? Because what, let's be honest, a lot of people listen to podcasts for the ones, twos, and threes. So can you give someone like the ones, twos, and threes for getting on, getting on a stage, getting on an interview, getting on a TV show? <laughs> so the first thing that you really need to focus on is creating what that story was like for you, your personal story. I call it an origin story. That's what I teach within my program. And it's exactly sort of how I started this off was like, here was my, my big aha moment. Um, and, you know, the pitfalls of it. And then like, ooh, brand new day, right? So once I had the origin story, then I was able to start applying to different speaking gigs, if you will. And so it's really a matter of just consistently putting yourself out there regardless of the no's that you get because you're going to get a bunch of no's before you get the yes. So if you are able to go, you know what, if that's a no for no right now, it doesn't mean I'm never going to apply again for this stage or whatever it is that you're applying for. It's like, okay, you don't want it now. That's fine. And it's your loss. It's not mine. So it's keeping that mindset positive of it's not a reflection that rejection is not a reflection of who you are, what you can um, bring to the world. That rejection is just a, Hey, this isn't what we're looking for right now. Sort of a thing. And then just to keep going at it, like last month, for example, I created 300 videos in 30 days for my business. That was massive, massive undertaking. And I'm not going to lie. It was not easy. <laughs> that was, it was a lot of time. But because of that, you know, I'm putting my brand out there and putting myself out there. Um, you know, Eric, then you approached me and were like, hey, I love the videos that you're doing. You want to be on the podcast? I was like, oh my God, yes, it would be amazing. You know, and then we um, just put stuff out there for Fox and CBS and NBC and stuff. And they were like, yeah, okay, cool. We'll like put this out there. So it's never, um, it's really never stepping off of that accelerator when you are taking inspired action towards your goals. And inspired action, we're going to talk about that a little bit in a little while. But what I, you know, one thing that I want to say is like a lot of people say, you know, my story's not that great. My story's not that, um, you know, I don't have a story. And uh, I always tell people that, you know, there's three parts of the story, the dream, the struggle and the victory. And a lot of times the most important part is the 10% of the struggle and the 10% of the victory, like the last 10% of the struggle and the last, the first 10% of the victory. And you can always write a story if you're always working and always kind of getting in there. What would you say to someone that says, you know, my story, I, I come from, I come from a silver spoon and I have this and I, you know, I don't need to work hard or I, I, success has never happened to me. Like my family's never done this. Like, what would you say to someone? Because I'm sure you've gotten this, like my story is not great. So what would you say to somebody that, that's like, I can't find my origin story? So we all have stories, right? We have all lived life and we've all overcome things that have been in the, in the way. And even if say that silver spoon, like for myself, I grew up with a silver spoon, right? Like my parents had millions of dollars. I never wanted for anything. I never had to work hard when I was a kid, but then, you know, got to the point where I was so broke. I was, you know, putting top ramen in half to eat but I didn't have a story of I was in this horrific car wreck and they had to amputate my leg. And because of that, you know, and I feel like a lot of the times that's sort of the stories that we see. And then we feel that, well, my story isn't that impactful. The thing is, it is impactful because it impacted you. So at any point that you had something that made you go, aha, 
and, and change direction because you knew by changing the direction was going to take you to a better place. That is where you can cultivate that story. And it's not so much of like the events that happened. It's really the feeling that was behind all of those things. You know, that's how humans communicate. We communicate through story. Story is essentially to make you feel something. So if you can figure out how to communicate how you felt in the moment that these things were happening, then you can create a story regardless of if you have this huge, you know, car wreck, for an example, again, um, or if you just were like, hey, I wasn't happy and I needed to do something else with my life because that's monumental. Most people don't do that. Most people just hang out in the struggle and they're like, I hate my life. I go to work nine to five, Monday through Friday. And then I wait for the weekends and I binge drink and watch Netflix. Like you're doing something that is amazing because for one, you're listening to this podcast. So I know that you're an entrepreneur or you want to be one and you're doing better for yourself because you have a bigger dream. And that is a story. There it is. Like she dropped, she dropped the mic right there. Everybody has their story. And, and I love what you said, because there's so many people out here, out there in the world that um, will sit in the struggle. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll sit in the struggle and they won't want to shift to make that shift. They won't want to say, quit the job and go to school. They won't want to, like, you had the opportunity for management and you decided, you know what, this isn't where I want. And I wrote this down in my notes. You were like, the glass ceiling is right here. I'm accepting the glass ceiling. If I accept what you're, what you're offering me right now, I'm going to, I'm going to open up my life and the things that I'm doing. And that was a defining moment for you. I mean, you're mm -hmm. talking about it now in a, on a podcast, like you're talking about now, I'm sure you've talked about it on stage. Like that was a defining moment for you and everyone out there listening. There's a defining moment right there when you changed and you decided I wasn't going to take that job. I wasn't going to do it this way. I wasn't going to do something like that. So amazing. I mean, just think about it. That's, that's, that's what we want. You want to think about. So I'm going to transition into something really cool because I was, I was watching some of the stuff that you've been doing lately and 300 videos in 30 days, guys, if you want to know what massive action looks like, that's what massive or at massive action looks like. That is 10 videos a day, not mm -hmm. taking days off 10 videos nope. a day. So you talk about three, the three pillars of your, of your business, the three pillars of what you train, and it's called awareness, breakthrough, and inspired action. Without giving away the farm, without like letting people write down all the notes, can you kind of give us a broad overview stroke of what awareness, breakthrough, and inspired action looks like? Because inspired action is not the same, and you write this in, in your books, is not the same as action. So if you can give us a broad stroke of what that looks like, kind of almost like the three-step pitch for awareness, breakthrough, and inspired action, that would be amazing. And if you guys are taking notes right now, right now is where you hit the record button. Right now is where you break out the pen and paper. Right now is you pull over the car and just stop for a second because the next three to five minutes could change your life. So it is a very simple process. It's not easy. I'm not going to lie to you. When you are experiencing the first step in awareness, that is where you really detach yourself from the events, from the outcomes, and take a good hard look at the results that you've gotten in your life, where you currently are right now, and what got you there. Like legitimately, it's not blaming somebody else. It's not putting, um, you know, judgment on other people. It's not, it's, it's 100% taking responsibility. So when you can detach your emotions from the circumstances of your life, from, you know, who did what or said what, that is where you get into awareness. And you can, from there, you is the only way that you can get to breakthrough. So once you've figured out where you are and why you're there, then you're able to go through breakthrough, which is, busting up the belief system that has gotten you to create where you are because your belief system is working. It's gotten you to exactly where you are right now, this point in your life. Now, if that happens to be somewhere that you're not fully 100% wanting to be, then you have to figure out through awareness, what can I bust up? What belief system am I running that I can bust up to now have the breakthrough and create something new, create the new belief system. 
which then leads to inspired action. And like I, I wrote in my show notes here, inspired action is not the same as action because anybody can take action, right? Anybody can be busy. Anyone can have a task list of a million things. But when you're taking inspired action, that's when you're truly fueled by something bigger than yourself. That's when you're fueled by making the impact on the world. When you wanting to do something different and better for your family, when you're wanting to create something that is so amazing that it literally propels you out of bed. And then what we do is we figure out what are the actions that are going to get you to the goal in the smallest amount of time. So it's not like making a plan to make a plan to make a plan. It's okay. The next biggest step that I can take that's actually going to be fruitful for me and toward my goal is what, and then doing it, you know, and like we've said in this, um, in this interview so far is like, I'm a huge jumper, right? Like I'm both feet deep end all the time. And so for me, that's what I feel that inspired action is. It's like no holds barred. Like there's no going back. We're in it to win it and we're going and then move because you can be, you can be scared. You will be scared. Making a change is, is very scary and fearful and being able to move through the fear and do it anyway, that's where you start to see those massive results in life that you want to create. That is a home run. So awareness, self-assessment, taking, uh, taking your own response, 100% of your own responsibility and knowing where you are. So knowing where you are, where you're starting from the place and understanding that your past isn't your future. And then break, I love what you said. The breakthrough is like busting up that belief. Like that is like, that, that should be IP. Like you're busting up that belief because whatever belief that was, um, you're busting it up because it's not going to hold you down anymore. And then the action to the goal to the smallest amount of time, but it's not, it's, it, it's inspired because it's something bigger than you. It's something more fruitful than you. It's, you know, you're aligning yourself with something way bigger than you. People will do so much more for the team. People will do so much more for the community than they're doing for themselves. I heard the other day, like, yeah, I could give you a paycheck. I could be like, yeah, here's this, here's this amount of money, this amount of money, this amount of money, but it wears off. Because you you mm -hmm. don't have anything going, you're not you're not taking a lot of people with you. You're not helping a lot of people. You're not showing other people what to do and how to do it. And that big, huge, like giving back, that fulfillment is what a lot of people miss. In there, that's that's one of the reasons why they need inspired action. Because action will get you to where you need to go, but inspired action will get you fulfillment on where you're going. Exactly. There are so many people who are out there like, you know, oh yeah, I was making like six figures, seven figures, but I wasn't happy. Well, okay. Like, why is that? It's because it wasn't inspired action. It was just, oh, I'm just going to go get the money. And that doesn't help anybody other than that person necessarily. And so many times you can look up and see those people really are not happy. And what is the point then? Yeah. I was listening to a Darren Daly the other day. And Darren talked about one of his friends, huge on Wall Street, all this stuff. He's got a flat on Manhattan and, and this. And then he's got one of his buddies that, you know, drives a modest car, but has a family and has everybody. And he goes, you have more sanity and more things to love than the flat and all this stuff. Because he's like, you know, he, 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 part of his life is not there. It's, it's broken. There's a hole in it. And he's like, mm -hmm. your whole, your life is fulfilled. Yeah. You could, you could want the Maserati and you could want these other things, but your life is full. And I, I think a lot of people just need to, sometimes you got to realize that maybe just maybe the ladder of success that you're portraying or that you, that other people are portraying on you is not the ladder of success that you want. I mean, mm -hmm. it suck to get to the, to the top of the building and be like, oh crap, this is the wrong building. I didn't even want to be here. <laughs> right, I'm exactly. Like I'm here all by myself <laughs> at the top with, okay, well, that's kind of suck. <laughs> I actually, uh, that's one of the things that we really, really stand behind is this idea that you are 100% capable of creating your dream life. And I love how you brought that up because um, I actually came in contact, went to my 21 year reunion this past year uh, or weekend. And 
I was like, oh my gosh, how did I get so old? But besides that, I ran into this girl who follows me on Facebook and everything. And she told me, oh my gosh, I love watching your stuff. You're so inspiring, you know, but I don't want, I don't want the things that you want. And I was like, girl, you don't need to want the things that I want. Like, I want you to create your version of the dream lifestyle. And my version of the dream lifestyle is like on the beach and taking vacations, all that. And her version of it is having acres in a mountain town with her kids and like um, animals and stuff around. And I'm like, wow, like that sounds absolutely fantastic. Like for you, that's not fantastic for me. And that's totally fine because that's what we want people to do is to build what their dream life is like and know that they're 100% capable of doing it. Yeah. That's, and that, that is a big thing. Like, like we talked about, like you want to make sure that at, get some checkpoints to make sure that you're in the right, you're going the right direction. GPS always says there's a right turn here, or there's a diversion here, or something's happening here. You should check your GPS every once in a while. Um, I love that. Make sure that you're going the right direction. So <laughs> that's- I love that. And when you get, if you make a wrong turn, what do they do? They reroute you. Right. It's okay. <laughs> Just take another way. It's fine. So we have, I have a couple of questions that I want to ask, ask you. Um, I was reading some of the stuff that you were on, on your website and you're talking about the middle class. And I think it's the dots that you just were talking about a little bit, like understanding that all the decisions that you make. Um, one thing that you said was we were settling for all the things in the middle class society says you should have and strive no further. What steps did you take? What steps did you take when you, when you actually had that self-assessment, when you looked inside and understood the awareness and were like, this isn't going to happen. I'm going to do something different and I'm going to help more and more people. What was like, what was, what was the steps that you did? Like the first couple steps that got you going to go in that direction. So what the very first thing we did was we had to have the awareness, right. To, to say, oh my gosh, what went wrong in our marriage? Like literally we were sitting there on, you know, after work, Friday, Saturday night, just like watching TV kind of zoned out being like, wow, this is not what we wanted, but by any measure, you know, we were living that middle-class lifestyle that society's like, oh yeah, you need the house and the two cars and, you know, a pet and this, that, and the other thing, but we weren't happy. Mm. So the very first thing we did was we had a conversation, an honest, authentic, open conversation with one another of, you know, I love you and I want to be with you, but like, what are we doing with our lives? And then... I am a huge proponent of brain dumping. It's like one of my favorite things. So I got out a giant piece of paper and a bunch of different colored pens. And I just started brain dumping all of the things that we could do to generate more income in the next three months. I, I literally wrote bake sale on my piece of paper because <laughs> even though I knew I was not going to do a bake sale, but when you're generating all of these ideas of like, well, how are we going to come up with the money? There's no bad idea. Because one idea will feed to another idea will feed to another idea. So brain dump, and this works for anything just besides generating money, like any problem that you're working on, start brain dumping and just put everything you possibly can. Uh, and then we were able to pick out the ones that we wanted to move forward with and decided we set our flag in the sand saying, okay, we want to generate an extra 14K in the next three months. Because why? We wanted to go to Ireland. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, let's do this. And we started with, um, what did we start? I think we started with Airbnb. We started driving for Lyft. We started just doing side hustle stuff. And we kept our focus on it. This is the other huge step is you have to stay focused on what it is that you want to create. Because the moment that you take your eye off the ball, so to speak, like you're going to lose momentum. You're going to trip. You're not going to end up where you want to be. Right. So you have to always keep, you know, front of mind is like, where am I going? What is that flag? And then do everything that you can to get toward the flag. Uh, and also having some kind of support system. You know, I had my husband, we were doing it together. Maybe you're not married. Maybe you don't have a spouse who supports you. Um, you can definitely find somebody to be your buddy and to help you with that. So maybe a friend or a relative 
or connect with somebody online um, on, on a Facebook group or something. And so, hey, you want to be accountability buddies? Because that really, really helps. So the first thing is getting all of those ideas out of your brain onto paper. The second part of that is, you know, picking what it is that you want and keeping that end goal in mind as you're working toward it. And the third step is making sure you have community around you to help you um, stay upbeat and motivated and, and honor yourself because you're the one who picked the goal, right? That, that's huge. And, you know, a lot, a lot of people, they, they don't realize that if they reached out to somebody to ask them to be an accountability partner, ask them to be a gym buddy, ask them to do, you know, we do a lot of things in teams. I mean, we watch teams every single day, every day. There's basketball teams, football teams, whatever teams you do, there's teams. And everybody knows that people just go in there and do their jobs. Just remember that. Like if you're struggling with something or you want to hit a big goal, I always told, I said this all last year, give up equity for leverage. And the reason why I did that is because I can't do everything that my business partners can do. And if they're, you know, 33%, 33%, 33%, I give, I'm giving up equity in my business. However, there's so much leverage that I have because they pick up the slack if I don't, I pick up the slack if they don't. So, I mean, and that, that's accountability. Those are accountability partners and that's accountability that you need. And that's one piece that a lot of people on the internet space, they, skills are cheap. Skills, you can watch any YouTube video, you can watch anything you want. It's the accountability and mentorship that really drives people, that really gets the people those aha moments. Because most of us, are one or two percent one just nudge to a breakthrough, and mm -hmm. you, you might just need that accountability partner. You might need that mentor. You might need that coach. You might need someone to just to say, try and look at it through this lens versus the lens mm -hmm. you're looking through. So mm -hmm. that's one of that's the things. gold. <laughs> that's gold. <good. laughs> so you also talk about something called life producers. So, yes. inside, and again, broad strokes, real broad strokes. I, I'm pulling some stuff from, you know, what is a life produce, producer and, and what does that mean to you? And I'm going to ask you one more question and we're going to, we're going to hammer this one down, but what is a life producer in your eyes? Because a lot of people are like, I'm a funnel hacker or I'm this or I'm that. And it sounds like life producer is what your title of liberty is. So tell me what life producer is and what does that mean to you? So we came up with this idea of a life producer because it's something between like a life coach and then what a producer would do for television or you know production, which is my background, right? Mm -hmm. So um, in television or even in music, you have a producer who's behind the scenes making sure that everything is put together in a way that makes the project take off. Well, we just happen to have our clients as our projects and we happen to help them put together their behind the scenes stuff in a way that's gonna help them take off. Um, so it's not a one size fits all thing that we are, are putting together. We are working with our clients in a one-on-one -on -one capacity to figure out what exactly their personal goals are, what their business goals are, and then what strings we need to pull, put together, connect people to, and then kind of set them out on their, on their goals to get it done. And one of the things that I'm super, super proud of is within our program, we believe so much in our program and the steps and the clarity that we can help bring people that we're putting a crazy guarantee that we're going to continue coaching them after the 90 days. If for whatever reason, they're not able to actually reach the goals that they decided to, to hit in 90 days. So that's what a life producer does. We're in it for the long haul. We're going to help you produce your life so you can get what you want. That, 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 that's a nugget that, so I, I just want to tell people that um, if you're listening to this within the, within the month of August, and if you're not listening to it within the month of August, and it's, it's maybe, maybe the opportunities closed, maybe they're not taking on any coaches, any more clients, but becoming a life, what she just talked about is bringing somebody the goal, even if they pass their 90 days. Because one of my mentors told me this, you know, there's, there's the 10% that gets it done in 30 days. There's the, there's the other 10% that gets it done in 
plus days. We're not sure exactly how many days, but they will get it done at some point. And then there's most of you like the 80% that can get it done in 90 days. I love what she said. She said, if you're a 90, if you're an 80 percenter, if you're a 10 percenter, that's awesome. We're going to get you done in 90 days. If you're a 90, an 80 percenter, we're going to get you done in 90 days. If you're a 10 percenter, it takes a little bit longer. We are going to work with you till the end. And guys, I have a special treat for you inside the show notes. I'm going to drop the, the link to, um, I'm going to, I'm not even going to say the link, but I'm going to drop the link to the, uh, to, to the register for their coaching program. And their coaching program is called um, the Freedom and Abundance Accelerator. So think about what that is, Freedom and Abundance Accelerator. So we can get you more freedom, more abundance, faster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, I'm super excited for that. Um, you know what, I'll just, it's HTTPS. It's gonna be inside the, um, it's gonna be inside the show notes. It's Freedom abundanceaccelerator.com and if you register like they're registering right now before 816 so if you have in the next couple of days to to get done and get this in here it's going to be in the show notes so just make sure that you click on that link double check and see exactly what they're doing because if you're in that spot where you just need that one nugget that one that clarity that awareness that breakthrough that's gonna get you to inspired action, not just massive action, which has been thrown around all over the place. Massive, take massive action, inspired action. I think you'll have the breakthrough. So the last question I'm gonna have for you is, I'm gonna set this up real quick for you. Um, I don't know if you guys have listened to my podcast before, you'll know exactly what's coming. So you're on the biggest stage, the biggest stage of all of your peers. There's 200,000 people, 300,000, 400,000 people inside the stadium. And you're the Sunday afternoon speaker. And everyone knows what the Sunday afternoon speaker. You're like the front one. Like if there's a, if there's a p- poster or whatever, guess who's in the front? It's you. Like you're in the front of that poster. So you're capping out Sunday afternoon because everybody came to see you. You get done with your talk your training, your taught, your teaching. People are standing up, 200, 300,000 people are standing up. They turn around, they look up at the exit signs and there's a big poster like Grant Cardone has on the things as you're walking out, huge poster and your image is right there. Like you're the middle of the image. What's the one phrase that you want everyone to remember? Shay Kent by. You are capable. <laughs> you are capable. Nice. Yeah. You yes. are. Yes. <laughs> because you hear, you hear everybody that's like, oh yeah, you know, hold people accountable to their dreams. Well, yeah, that's great. Some people don't think that they're capable of actually doing the dreams. Mm. So I think the first thing that I want to spread the message is that you are capable. You were 100% capable of creating whatever it is in your life. And if that was the only thing that those people would get to take away from my Sunday morning, you know, talk to a crazy amount of people, it would be that you are capable. That is amazing. And I'm, that's the, that's the mic drop answer. That's the mic drop thing. I love, I love what you do. We used to call it the mic drop thing, but I changed it a little bit to that, that picture. So Guys, make sure you check out the show notes. Drop the link will be in there to register. Like I said, if it's after 816, you're not going to be able to get or 815, you're not going to be able to get in, but you can get on a waiting list. Um, if it is, take action, take inspired action, get the get the breakthrough that you're needing and understand the awareness that you could be having, that you could have to get that break loop, breakthrough to shoot that inspired action. So make sure you listen to the the full outro. Super excited. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Shay. You killed it on this interview. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of Burnt Foam Marketing Radio. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for your listenership and your continued support of Burnt Foam Marketing Radio. This is Eric Sablon. And as a bonus to you, I wanted to give you guys a free strategy session with me. All you have to do is go to www.burntphonemarketing.com forward slash book a call and we will set up a strategy session to help you get unstuck so that's www 
www.burnphonemarketing.com forward slash book a call.